Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Wild Goose Chase Challenge here in the niche. As usual, you can find the previous episodes linked in the video description below with its playlist, and the rules and guidelines for this challenge linked in the video description to a Google document that you can read through. And we are going to carry on right where we left off last time, celebrating the newest arrival to our little flock. So many of these flying babies! Look at little Hawk, look at him go. He really loves trying to attack all of the uh, the bundles that keep coming after all of our wonderful and delicious berries, which Zyros is helping to uh, defend now, by the way. And we also have the birth of another new winged baby boy, who is now the heartbreaker of the tribe, Caspian. Look at him! Look at him! He actually is not the strongest and he does not have the highest reputation of the new babies because he only has an 8 reputation for the tribe, but he is absolutely gorgeous. I think- oh duck, I haven't calculated your reputation yet. Ruddy is actually the one with the highest reputation and he reminds me of a little platypus and he may actually get us even closer to a proper goose in the future. Uh, but Ruddy is new. We've got little Caspian who is brand new. I love his sister Rin. She just looks absolutely gorgeous. And Rin and Turn are actually getting older now. And I think we'll be able to use their water body to really dive into the ocean and start swimming, which would be amazing. If we can give the geese water body so that they can hold their breath underwater while they hunt for fish, that would be fantastic. So where is water body actually? Okay, so we need to swim 41 more times. I'm pretty sure Turn will be able to do that once she ages up, so that should be just fine. Meanwhile, Tiarchi, doing his best to help his mate, is clearing the area of the bundles that threaten all of our berry bushes, while Tross can jump back up and continu continue to try to expand the flock by singing out for, uh, for nichelings who can come join them. And actually, Chickney, if you want to give birth? Chickney doesn't really have any genes that we're looking for, to be completely honest. So I think for now, you know what, we're going to summon her back and we will temporarily, she may not stay a helper forever. Gosh, let me turn her to blue to say that she's just kind of like a temporary help. But actually, Trost has enough resources to support other nichelings in the area. And you know what? I think Tross is realizing her children cannot really feed themselves. So she will allow Chickney to come into her territory and to stay if she will help with gathering food. That is a much better idea. And I think it makes TRT feel a bit better. Even if they don't like having a unrelated interloper in their territory, they will put up with it because they have enough space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they can have like six babies and a helper before we even have to worry about resources. So they're doing fine. And speaking of resources, meanwhile, I think I'll have Chili. I think he'll kind of spend his time sort of exploring with Tawny in the no man's land in the middle that all of the nichelings have accepted to be a spot where the young and kind of the the wanderers can gather for just a little bit before they go to establish their own territory. I don't know if Chili- Chili has a lot of the traits we're looking for, I think. He doesn't actually really. He has like white fur and he has brown horns, but I'm not sure what kind of territory he would want to establish. So I'm gonna let him kind of- I think he's kind of wandering around thinking about it. And meanwhile his father, Zabidi, is very busy making sure to patrol his territory. And his mother, Dove, not to be outdone by her sister, continues to call to establish and honk that this is her own territory here. And speaking of territories, back here, we finally have Inga and Io meeting. They exchange glances of their beautiful ocean blue eyes and decide, why not? And so we're gonna go ahead and have Inga jump into the water with Io and with the fish swimming about them, with the tiny little lagoon that they have found themselves in, full of wondrous delights, they shall hopefully fall in love. <laughs> 
Okay, she's not impressed by the lagoon. Maybe Ingo kind of wants to talk this through. What kind of goals and dreams do you have for the future? She dreams of nichelings like her mother, of nichelings like the great feather, of nichelings like the great goose above in the clouds. And I think that Eo here dreams of little ones who will be like him, who will be able to swim in the ocean, who will be able to use their webbed hind legs, who will be able to potentially fish. So we'll go ahead and give him Fishing tail? How close are we to beak? Uh, we're so close to beak. We'll give him fishing tail. He dreams of nichelings who will fish. Does she approve of these dreams? She does! Okay. I think they've kind of mutually agreed to go ahead and we'll establish a nest right here. Boom! To go ahead and have babies who will possibly span both land and water. And so Inga has one, two, three, four, five. She basically has territory all the way out to the river. One, two, three, four, five, and all the way out to this rock. So that's kind of her loop right here. Uh, and she, oh wait, Eo's the stronger one. <gasps> that's right. So Eo actually has that territory. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my gosh, it literally comes up exactly on the edges of Chisel and ZZ's territory. Holy canoodles. <gasps> And we just unlocked Claw and Ram Horn. Yes, having some horned geese will actually be super important for being able to uh, have some form of attack once we can like fly. All right, so we've got a great love story, possibly future flamingo babies going on back here. Uh, Chikni has actually been accepted kind of as a nanny helper. Uh, I think she's been accepted more as a gardener. So she's gonna be the gardener to help patrol and take care of the beautiful grassy territory that belongs to Tross. The children are all out and about. <gasps> and we have normal fertility and a new baby. All right, let's check out. Oh my goodness. Whistlethorn. What a name. I'm going to leave that name. Doesn't he look awesome? <laughs> look at little Whistlethorn. He's amazing! A and E, immunity, recessive heat body of everything. Fishing tail, yes! He's so cool! Wow! This is why you shouldn't doubt the, like, wild card babies that you send your niche links out to have. I think that we'll have chisel. They can have three children at a time. They have little Tawny, so they can't have any more babies or get pregnant until Tawny ages up. So we'll have to wait. But Whistlethorn, welcome, little friend. We're getting a lot of babies, so we're gonna start tearing through that food fast. So they need to start helping to feed themselves. <laughs> All right, Whistlethorn, let's see what you have. Brown Horns gets one. You have a wing, so that is two more points. So you're at three. And then you have three attacks, so he's actually at six. So he's got six reputation, mostly because of that wing and his great attacking ability. Awesome. Look at those guys. All right, we'll go ahead and have Chisel gather up some food. And ZZ, I think we'll kind of patrol some territory. There we go. And until Tawny ages outside of her parents' nesting area, uh, until she becomes an adult or I think a teen? Is she a teen already? Tawny, you are... She is a teen, so she could actually be wandering away. It's children and babies. Yeah, it's children and babies who have to stay in their parents' zone. But I think actually waiting till they, they reach breeding age is fine. So yeah, they, we have to wait for Tawny to grow up uh, or challenge another nicheling for greater territory before these two could have more children, which I don't think they're immediately interested in doing. All right, and Chili. You might need to kind of like start heading off to your own zone. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Really, there's not much space over here for Chili to be able to establish as his own. Uh, he could stay under his parents' guidance for a while, but I think he's a little bit independent. I'm going to send him like past the river and he can start exploring over here just in case that's a good spot for him. And if he can't find a mate and if he can't find territory to claim as his own, he can go and fall back under his parents' protection. 
Let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we've got plenty of space. Like, Dove really lucked out. She can basically have as many babies as she wants. But all right, so Swift has grown up, but we are waiting for Hawk to grow up. However, they're gonna need their own nesting space. They only have like four and three reputation. Hawk can fly up on top of here. I think they could probably nest over here. That would probably be a good idea. Maybe even on the sandbar and Okay, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead. Swift is gonna leave her family's protection and her family's home as she begins to look for her own area to go. And meanwhile, over here, Zyros is going to continue to help keep the bundles out of their territory. And Duck, look at you, Duck. What can you do, Duck? You know what, Duck, you can go. I'm gonna send him into the water and he can start playing in the lagoon to get some of that food to feed from the bottom. Very important. All right, meanwhile, Zaidi is continuing his exploration of the edges of his mate's territory. Can I reach the bunnels? And Hawk is trying to chase bunnels. We definitely need all of our nichelings flying as much as possible. Dove will call out for new members. Speaking of new members, Chickney will show her uses by- <gasps> New members! New members! I think actually everybody- This is literally like a little cuckoo! She looks so much like the other members of our tribe. I didn't even recognize that we had a new baby slipped into the nest. That is perfect. That is 100% like having a little cuckoo have hopped into the nest. This is amazing. Invite her in. There you go. Like we didn't even realize. I'm going to name her Cuckoo. Uh, actually, Azora is a beautiful name. So, uh, Azora Koo. I think is what we'll call her. And I think she's a great mimic. Like she just really slipped in and I legitimately thought it was just one of our babies. It was not, oh my gosh. So Azora Ku, a cuckoo perhaps, she has two natural attack. She has one red horn, so that's three points. White fur, four points. Uh, and that's about it. She doesn't have any of the beaks. She doesn't have the webbed hind legs. She doesn't have the wings, but she does have a little bit of a reputation just straight off. And now one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see, wait, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yeah, now, in fact, I think I need to start Tross. You're gonna have seven at one time. I don't know, we'll figure it out. But anyway, Azoraku has arrived and she can do some attack and collecting. So she already can help out our little tribe. Awesome. I think that that makes Tross quite tickled. We are having our tribe grow quickly though. So we do need to use a little caution. Turn will continue watching the edges. I think her sister Ren. Ren don't drown. Ren can't drown, right? Yeah, Ren can't drown. Cas Caspian keeping an eye on things. TRG gathering up some food. Nice. All right. Things are going nice and peaceful, to be honest. <laughs> I need more flyers. All right. Meanwhile, Eo is going to begin to search along these edges for any of the worms he can find. And Inga needs to stay here, roosting atop her egg, which I'm very excited to see what will hatch from there. All right. Another beautiful day. Your guys' populations are getting a little out of hand, if you ask me. All right, let's see. Swift. Let's see, here's a spot where she could get some food. There's a mole that she could potentially get some food from. And we'll go ahead and have Zyros kind of help out here. Duck, oh, duck, you can do so much. I think your little brother is curious about that too. And your other brother is very determined to attack these uh, these bundles. And then let's clear this away. Zaidi is very determined to make sure that they have the territory patrolled. Dove, not to be outdone by her sister. She'll also start up the great honking. <gasps> and Tawny is now aged up. Oh my goodness, what are we gonna do with Tawny? I mean, I guess Chili would be an okay mate, but I feel like we need to wait till we have platypus beak. And there's also like duck 
I think Duck is the one I wanted her to possibly meet with. Tawny and Duck. I don't know why. Uh, well, Fishing Tail. They do share some Fishing Tail. Do you have Fishing Tail? You do not. I just feel like Tawny and Duck are a good match for some reason. So I think that she's not that interested in Chili. And he's going to go ahead and continue to explore. There we go. But that means Tawny is old enough to find her own home. And she may one day find a home with Duck. So... I may send Tawny... Hmm. See, finding your own territory as a bird is very important. So I may send her across the way too, to kind of look for territory. There we go. So she's gonna start exploring, but that means her parents can now kind of be like, well, it was wonderful, daughter, uh, but go forth, be an adult. Chisel's excited about a new child. <gasps> just in time! I think that she's just barely gonna have time to have one last little one, hopefully another cute little rooster before her time is up. And then back here, let's see, searching. Eo continuing his search for noodle doodle worms. Will he unlock platypus beak? Hopefully. And then Inga, kind of keeping an eye on her nest. She can't go anywhere. Two more days to be pregnant. All right. Meanwhile, how's our little cuckoo? <laughs> that was really exciting to have like just a little cuckoo show up. And we'll need to take good care of the gardens and good care of the territory. We already need to repair this nest. A couple more calls for new nichelings. There we go. Turn's still doing her best to try to help. There we go. Oh, Rin, you got it! Turn and Rin are going to be swimming as soon as they grow up for sure. Tiarchi defending his mate's territory as best he can. Yes! Even more resources. All those years ago, Tross really made the right decision by taking a risk to go so far out. <gasps> Look at these ears! What is going on with you, you adorable little bat ear? I kind of want to name you uh, like after an owl of some type. Uh, let's see, there's the pygmy owl, there's the barn owl, there's the greater owl. Uh, I think I'm going to name her Owlette. There we go. So we have little Owlette now. We have way too many babies, I think. It's going to be hard to feed all of them. And then we have... <gasps> oh, oh, Mies! What a fun name! There we go. And like our, our goddess Mies. Little peacock female tail! Oh my gosh, it's so cute! Hello, little one. You are actually going to be Dove the second. I'm like, no, wait. Yeah, yeah, wait. Is she naming... No, 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 no. We're going to name her Feather the second. That's what I wanted. So she's going to be Feather the second after her grandmother. She is absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness. What's her reputation? Let's see. One natural strength of five with the wings. And then six, seven. So she has seven. There we go. All right. Oh my gosh. Well, that's an exciting set of births. And I think that these two girls are finally old enough that they're going to start wandering in the waters. Oh, how fun. They're trying to go fishing. That's so cool. And we've got our little cuckoo who has been added in to the family. We have got a new kind of like a uh, gardener who's going to be tending to all of the land. We've got Tiarchi taking care of his children as best he can. Over here, we have got Zabidi doing his best to kind of clear the, ooh, another permanent nest all along that was here all along in Dove's territory. Uh, apparently she doesn't want a nest there though. We have little Owlet. We've got little Hawk, who's super excited to chase every bundle he possibly can. We have little Duck, who is helping out with our efforts to find lots of noodle doodle worms. We've got blind little Zyros, spared by Zabidi. We have got Swift, who is looking for her own territory to share when Hawk comes of age. Let's see, so she'll do some exploring there. We have got, oh, we need to repair the nest. We have Chisel with her last child on the way. <gasps> Rooster, look, he can fly. He can start exploring everywhere. Oh my goodness. I think that the little ones would definitely be uh, exploring. I think as the tribe gets older, they'll start allowing nichelings kind of to explore their territory. Just not, they can be the only ones to have the nest in that zone. And that might be the case. So Chili gets to hang out with Rooster, who just landed from the skies. And then ZZ. 
Oh, Zizi also only has a few days left to live. Oh my gosh, I hope their children are gonna be okay. Zizi's doing okay. Like, we have Inga just kind of waiting for more food. We've got Eo. Ooh, digging up those noodle worms. Any minute now, we'll have Platypus Beak unlocked. What a fun story that we've got just everywhere here. Including with Tross, who can come down and sing happily to her mate about their wonderful flock that they have expanding through the lands. Oh, the little children just watching over everything. We're getting there, guys. I think, slowly but surely, who's sick? <gasps> slowly but surely, we will get closer and closer to our goose. So, all right. Thank you guys so much for joining me. It is interesting because it's kind of very, very peaceful and slow paced with our nichelings. Here, they only have so many trials. So I think our challenge is really going to be one of balancing out food and getting the top babies that we think are going to be useful for breeding up our goose challenge and just watching and seeing how their stories evolve. We are getting to the point where there's not enough space for everybody to have their own territory. There's only really one part of the island that hasn't been claimed yet. And once that happens, if we end up getting a few pairs where we think that they would definitely have the best children, we may go ahead and send them on to a migration into new lands. But all right, my friends, if you could, do please leave a like for all of these entertaining stories of our nichelings lives. If you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.